Hello, dear friends. May God bless all of you. And may the Holy Spirit come to meet your greatest need, the greatest need of your life, which is to understand His voice. The greatest need human beings have is to understand God, to understand His Word, to understand His voice, to perceive the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God. When a person understands and inclines towards Him, when they understand and do what His voice says, then this is the secret for eternal life. It's not a mediocre life as many religious people think and talk about, but a life of quality. Look at how great God is. God is infinitely great. He created us. He created human beings. He created us. And do you think that He has any pleasure in seeing us human beings living a mediocre kind of life that is unstable, living anxiously, sick, oppressed, without any peace, above all, without peace. No. He created human beings, which is his masterpiece. His masterpiece, we can put it this way. He created heaven and earth, everything with perfection. You look at the skies, everything's perfect. The sea, the forest, everything's perfect. Everything God has created is beyond perfect. And do you think that He created anything imperfect or with any flaw? No. God is great and created everything with perfection. And human beings is God's masterpiece. The doctors know that because they they are, let's say, they don't know the mechanism of the human body. The doctors, the scientists, those who know the human being well, they know how perfect everything created to the smallest of details with perfection. And do you think that God created all these to see us suffering here in this world, groaning, crying, crying because of a disgraceful, miserable life. No, He created everything with perfection so that He could be in permanent communion with His creation, with His children. However, when mankind failed, when mankind disobeyed the Word of God, that was all they did, disobedience. So human beings entered hell and increased, developed hell. They made their suffering even worse, is what we see in this world. Well. What can a person do in order to return to God? What can we do to resolve our problem with Him? What can we do? He said Himself, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts. Return to me. Come back to me, says the Lord of hosts and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Three times 
he identifies himself as the Lord of hosts. In one verse, in what for? To say, return to me, and I will return to you. That's all. That's all. And there is the secret for a life of quality promised by the Lord Jesus. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Men by themselves cannot be justified. Men on their own cannot save themselves. So God sent Jesus to pay for the sin of all humanity. All humanity, everyone sins, past, present and future, with no exception. However, what do men need to do? Men need to return to God. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the light of the world. Therefore, dear friends, everything that you need, your suffering ends definitely when you return to God. Obviously, of course, that when you return to God, you will have to confront those who enjoy living far from God, far from His presence, those who want, those who don't believe in God, who mock God Himself, those who mock the sacrifice He's done for all of us. So, you, you have to confront these people that perhaps could be your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, your boss, your employers, the government, and so on. It's the entire world, really, that is allied with evil, separate from God, far from God. All of these people will turn against you who return to God. So, it's a war. This is our war. But God allows us to go through this war so that we learn to fight, to overcome, to resist, to conquer through faith. And only through faith. You don't have to deserve in order to be blessed, to return to God. No, you need to believe in His Word. He says, return to me, return to me, and I will return to you. That's all. However, there's a small detail that I still haven't mentioned. When a person returns to God by faith, they are forgiven. Naturally, automatically, they are forgiven. So, the person was forgiven from all of their guilt, all of their sins, all of their mistakes. They were set free from everything they did wrong. So, they, out of their own free will, have the understanding that they were forgiven. So, they also have the obligation to forgive their neighbor, including those who do evil against them, including those who upset them or is upsetting them, including those who destroyed their marriage, destroyed their business, they destroyed their financial life, they destroyed their family. This person who returned to God was forgiven, so they have to forgive all these people as well, all of them, all of them. 
this is the secret for you to live at peace with yourself and with God. I'd say that forgiveness is the most powerful prayer there is. The most powerful prayer is the one that offers forgiveness. Actually, Jesus in the Lord's Prayer teaches us to forgive. He tells us to forgive. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. So we have to forgive permanently as many times as it's necessary. So if you return to God only because of this faith, he said, return to me and I will return to you. So if you say, I return to you, Lord, I don't know what you do, my life is chaos. So when you find God's grace, God's forgiveness, when you find God, then you are forgiven and immediately you receive peace. You receive peace because you now live in communion with God. You were separated from Him and now you return to Him, you're close to Him, which means that you are now a person of peace and you live at peace. However, people who have wronged you they also need to be forgiven by you. You do a much greater good to yourself when you forgive, then you are doing good to those who are being forgiven by you. Did you know that? When I forgive, I am doing something good to myself, more than to those that I have forgiven. Therefore, dear friends, this is a matter of faith and this faith to forgive comes from the spirit of faith which is the Holy Spirit. He gives us this faith and he gives us the courage, the courage to obey and we obey and then we receive peace. As for those who have wronged us, if they will forgive us, amen. If they don't, it's their problem. But our part we must do, which is the important thing. And to forgive is to wish that person well, those who hurt you. That's what you forgive is. You wish well on those who hurt you. You forgive them. And that's what God does to us. When He wishes as well, when He does us good, is because He forgave us. And He says in His holy word, the wicked ones, the rebellious ones, those who are far from Me, away from Me, they have no peace. There is no peace for them at all. They may have a wonderful family, a beautiful house, they may have the most expensive car in the world. You may have planes and yachts. And you may have the world at your feet. You may have everything that you want. You may be a Solomon of this generation, having wealth, glory, power, women, men. But if you do not have God within you, you have no peace. There's no peace for you. You have no peace. And why is it? Because there was no forgiveness. And why was there no forgiveness? Because there was no surrender. There was no dedication of one's life to Him. There was no faith to surrender to Him. They know the Word. They know the Word but they have no faith to surrender themselves to the Word. There is a difference between what is written and what it actually is, people say. They say, well, the theory is one thing, but in practice it's different. 
Well, then go in this futile and vain thought of yours, in all these sophistries, and you are going to see where you end up. I do not want you to go this far, but if you keep these ideologies and turn your back on God to live your life with, you know, with sin and do whatever you want, a life of freedom, freedom, freedom. You want freedom. You are far from God. You are dead to God. Actually, that's what death is. Death means separated from God. That's what God said to Adam. Listen, if you eat from the fruit of that tree in the midst of the garden, you shall die meaning you will live far from me, away from me. And that's what has been happening. When a person dies, when a loved one dies, they are separated from all of us, from living with us, with the family and so on. So, dear friends, return to me, says the Lord of hosts. And the Lord of hosts says, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Three times he says, Lord of hosts. Actually, not three, but four times. Whoa, I hadn't even noticed this. It says here, therefore say to them, Zechariah the prophet says, God spoke through him. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. That's it. Three times, actually. Sorry. Therefore, dear friends, the secret is to return to God, and you will have peace. Perfect peace. Because this peace is God's presence in your life. The most powerful prayer you can ever say is to forgive someone. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, let me give you a quick tip here. Today is Thursday and we have the love therapy today. The love school. It doesn't seem to be such a big deal for many, but it makes all the difference. I wish I had had this opportunity when I was single and young. I wouldn't have made so many mistakes as I did in my life. I wouldn't make so many wrong choices. But God kept me. He protected me. He kept me with His mighty hands. And... We try to give to people what God has given us. So the love therapy is to teach people how to love. You think that you know how to love, don't you? But if people knew how to love, look at their life. They have money, they have position in society, they have everything in the world. But they have no peace. And they're Marriage is a failure, the separation. It's as though they lived far from one another, even though they live in the same house and sleep on the, on the same bed. This is it. God, dear friends, established marriage as a symbol, a type of our relationship with Him. He is the man. She represents the church. He is the head, representing Jesus, the head of the church. The church is the body that represents. It's represented by the wife. So this is the order of things the natural divine order. So, if you are able to understand this and 
practice, then you will understand what it is to have a peaceful life with tranquility. For example, we I can speak for myself and the pastors, the bishops of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, they have the wife, they have the husband, I mean, they have their life organized after God, after having had our encounter with God, the most important thing is our marriage. Because then it shows in a practical way our relationship with God. So when we live at peace, in harmony, this is true love respect towards one another, then we live at peace and with harmony with God. That's why God said, there is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked. However, this peace hasn't been discarded. You can return. If you want, He stretches out His hands and He says, return to me and I will return to you. So today, is the day to invest on this. Think about this, dear friends. These love therapy meetings tonight at 8 p.m. in the Temple of Solomon with Renato and Cristiani, as well as in other temples of the church, the capo, the bishop or the pastor and, and their wife will be helping you to form a true marriage. They will be helping you to be happy because it's not possible for you to have peace with God and live at war inside your own house with your spouse. Isn't it true? Very well. The love therapy, okay? May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God.